Rhonda O'Reilly, and as acting head of staff for a few more weeks, it is my privilege to welcome all of you to this time of celebration here at Mount Washington Presbyterian Church. It is indeed a blessing this day to celebrate the eight-year ministry of the Reverend Dr. L.P. Jones, to thank him for his service among us and to honor his leadership and guidance and to wish he and Nancy all the best as God calls them into the future. Let us open our time with prayer. Once again, faithful God, you have called us to gather as your people in this, your church. And we come today to honor and to thank and to praise you, O oh God, for the many gifts and talents the joy in life and in ministry and, to call, and the call to serve that you have given to L.P. Jones. We thank you for his call to ministry and his yes to service here in this place. For his leadership, his gift with words, his smile, his laughter, his skill in teaching and his care for each of us. LP has been such a blessing to this place and to these people, and we pray today that you would give your blessing continually to LP and Nancy and all their family in the days ahead as they journey into the future. And we pray on this, the last Sunday of the Easter service season, in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you all for being here this morning to celebrate, celebrate LP's seven plus years of ministry with us here at Mount Washington Presbyterian Church. Um, I doubt that I'm alone in um, thinking this feels just a little bit strange in a way, in the sense that we're kind of memorializing LP when we have the gift of him sitting right here with us, <laughs> which we are very grateful for. Um, just last week I heard Tom Brokaw talking about his book, A Lucky Life Interrupted. Um, in which he shares his ongoing battle with incurable multiple myeloma. Um, when NBC named their new center after him, he acknowledged feeling appreciative, yet he wondered at the same time if they knew something about his condition that he himself didn't know. <laughs> so I want to assure you that that's not the case, um, that's not the case here. Um, when LP's ministry was cut short in October, our attention immediately turned to his health um, and his needs and um, trying to kind of fill the void that we felt here at church. And in true Presbyterian fashion, it's taken us this long to get this celebration together. Uh, but that's truly, <laughs> it truly is a celebration of LP's ministry with us. Um, several months ago, um, a group consisting of Linda Ulrey, Suzanne Myers, St. Jones Croxton, Gail Kiley, Tony Pestro, Steve Long, and Peter Berger set out to plan how we should honor um, LP and celebrate all that he has done and thank him for all that he's done um, for us here at MWPC. A tall order to be sure. Um, the LP Jones Ministry Celebration Fund was established um, and there's some other honorary things um, that are coming as part of our program today. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, Barry and I were asked to highlight some of the contributions that LP has made to MWPC over the years um, and we're very honored to do that. Um, This is by no means meant to be a complete cataloging um, of all that LP is, uh, means to all of us and all that he's done for all of us, nor is it meant to be a reflection of how much he means to us personally. Um, consider it more of a, um, a sampling, I guess, of um, the impact that his ministry has had on MWPC. Um, when I think of LP as head of staff at Mount Washington Presbyterian, three mantras come to mind. And they're probably the same three that pop into your minds. All are welcome here. We can walk hand in hand even if we don't see eye to eye. And the beginning of his, his benediction that begins, life is short. In my mind, was the first two are, are, linked, uh, are linked together. I think by welcoming all, we kind of set ourselves up to not always see eye to eye, don't we? Um, but I think they both speak to the warmth and hospitality that starts before the worship service even begins flows through the service um, and spans the time in between the services. 
Um, prior to LP's time here, I don't recall the congregation ever having to be ringed back in after the passing of the peace to the extent that we do. Um, in fact, this was, I'm not usually an 11 o'clock, but I noticed that um, the choir just marched right on and sat, started the next song, thinking that we would probably never get out if um, somebody didn't wrap things up. Um, so I think that, again, speaks to the warmth um, and hospitality. Um, and who knew seven years ago how profound LP's benediction that begins, life is short, would become. Um, but he has demonstrated for all of us, and continues to demonstrate for all of us, how to enjoy the journey with those who are around us, how to not hesitate to be kind and loving, and to, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, sprain allergies, um, and to, um, understand that God has never really finished creating any of us. Um, LP has many wonderful gifts, as we all know, but I think we would all agree that preaching and teaching are among his greatest strengths. Um, we'll never have enough of either of those. Um, while LP's wisdom surpasses most, it's his ability to communicate that wisdom that leaves us in awe. His depth of understanding illuminates scriptures in a way that challenges us to understand the histor historical context <coughs> while finding new meaning that's both personal and relevant. Never one to shy away from tough, tough issues, and he pushes us to tackle these issues with new understanding and compassion, agreeing to disagree, and that's as far as we can come. And his delivery is always enviable, to say the least. I'd venture guess that all of us at one time or another have mulled over one of LP's messages and then gone on to discuss it at a later time with our family, our friends, our co-workers. Um, and despite the fact that LP describes himself as an introvert, he manages to inspire us um, to reach out to others. Many of us would consider our signature hunger ministry one of LP's greatest legacies. He has claimed to others that the idea bubbled up from within the congregation, but I'm sure that with God's help, he held the bubble wand. After all, we have heard many times LP speak eloquently about breaking bread with friends and family and community. Under his tutelage, we've seen a fourfold increase in the outside the budget dollars donated to our hungry ministry, hunger ministry. In honor of MWPC's 100th anniversary, over $135,000 was committed to the hunger ministries. We've seen significant increases in volunteer numbers for local food pantries, monthly community meals, the first Lutheran and Tender Mercies meals, to name a few. LP supported the controversial and very visible pantry shelf in the gathering area, hoping that we would remain hand in hand, even if we didn't all see eye to eye. LP encouraged us to strengthen our relationship with Mount Washington School, which we have done by providing food for weekends to students in need, by providing backpacks filled with school supplies, by funding specific requests as they arise, and by inviting Mount Washington School families to participate with us, with us in a variety of ways, including our children's ministries and mobile food pantries and more. LP supported the establishment of the Alton Jenkins Lecture Series, and his reputation has helped bring, bring in renowned biblical scholars such as John Shelby Spong, Marcus Borg, and Dr. the Reverend Dr. Walter Brueggemann, whose work we really appreciate this morning. <coughs> a, new, a unique partnership with Christ Church Cathedral was created and continues today. The attendees to the lectures have traveled from Central Kentucky and Northern Ohio to participate, and they look forward to future events. Even as LP's schedule filled with the needs and requests of this church, he found time to work with the Presbytery on several complicated and taxing endeavors. As a result, he is well respected among pastors and congregations within the Presbytery. 
The hours and leadership put forth have been extraordinary and very well appreciated. I feel sure that the support that poured out from congregation and following LP's diagnosis was in large measure a result of these feelings of admiration and gratitude. One of LP's last endeavors with us has become known as the Thrive Project, which has pushed us to evaluate where we are, where we want to go, and how we're going to get there. Though it seems harder to move forward without LP's leadership, we will keep God's will in the forefront of these efforts. As we are here to honor LP, I'd also like to thank him for the joy that he, is, he brings to our congregation. Our joy is never greater than when LP is baptizing a baby. Baptisms are always special, but as LP's tall presence carries that tiny, tall infant down the aisle and then hands, hands him or her to a beaming member of the church, we, are, we all smile and we're all moved. Our congregational pledge of, of love and support to each of these children is always accepted with grateful hearts full of God's grace. Often, LP has acknowledged inspirational and influential people from his past, from his childhood in Paris, Kentucky, to various congregations along the way. Many of these people, as I remember, were perhaps unlikely or downtrodden, but they were faithful and earnest. In the Reverend Dr. Brugman's words, or using his words, they may have been fragile vessels, but they carried the power of the gospel. They served to demonstrate care and love to LP through the years and inspired him to pursue a life in ministry. As LP has been here, I'd like to think that we've learned some of those lessons and ourselves have become inspired and that we're more faithful, more caring and loving, and more accepting. For these things and so much more, we are forever grateful to LP for his leadership and devotion. Thank you. We do not do this lightly or by any means automatically. 
This is only the third time in our now over 100 year history that we have bestowed such an honor. LP, I would like to suggest that our decision reflects that we were learning and listening all these years you've been preaching to us. Two of LP's recurring themes of his ministry have been, one, we are better when we think and act as community with each other. And two, our lives ought to be an expression of gratitude for all that we have been given by God. When we retired, there was an overwhelming response from this faith community with the question, how can we express our affection and gratitude for and to LP? So today, together, as community, we make this expression of our gratitude for all you did for us, with us, and through us. So we have a certificate that I'll read in for you. It says, the congregation of Mount Washington Presbyterian Church and the Presbyterian Cincinnati hereby bestow the title of Pastor Emeritus the Reverend Dr. L. P. Jones, in gratitude for his outstanding work in Christ's service, his love-filled relationship with our congregation, and his example of extraordinary courage and grace. guest lecturer. 
I thought it would be a one-time thing. And that uh, my family and I would like to make a donation uh, following his death, uh, after his death, uh, to uh, set up a lecture fund for that purpose. And we also invited each of you to do the same. And as Barry spoke at earlier, we, uh, there's no way that we could have done that without, without LP. And the lectures would not have been possible. So it's very appropriate that now the lecture fund is known as the Jenkins Jones Lecture Fund. Um, I also want to uh, thank Nancy. She was very helpful too. Uh, with uh, the lectures and our association with uh, Christ Church Cathedral has allowed us to continue the lectures beyond that uh, one lecture that I thought we would have. Uh, we have so far had four lecturers and the committee is currently working on a fifth. And I'd also like to thank the uh, current and very dedicated committee uh, Linda Glory, Theo Tucker, Joan Sigmund, Harold Colin Brander, Connie Rodriguez, Barbara Ross, and David Coons. Uh, most of them have been on the committee since its inception. And I thank them for uh, the uh, work they've done over the past six and a half years. And uh, it's a very talented group. So I'm pleased to accept this, and uh, as always over the past few years, you have been very generous with your contributions. Thank you.
which have been the recipient of our volunteers, of our hours, of our tutoring, of our homes, and of our love for children. And here is a big check from Washington School. Thank this congregation and this church enough. Um, I'm the principal of the school, Deb Klein. Um, we truly believe that we need to serve our children and our families, um, not only in academic ways, but in all the other challenges that they have, and prepare them for the best opportunities they have um, in the future. And without you, we could not do this. Um, we're a public school. And, you know, funds are tight and funds are controlled by others. And the generous donation that you've given to us um, will go very far. And I promise you, uh, it will continue to serve our children and our families and our community, just as you have been doing already with the mobile food pantry, uh, the power packs. Um, you provide emergency funds for us. Um, the list just goes on and on. Um, Recently, we wanted to develop a tagline for our school, and we got together some students, uh, family members, staff members, community members, and one of those was um, Candy Stone. She was on the committee with us. Um, we worked for about six hours to come up with a tagline, and I think this is just fitting for the tagline that we came up with, just a perfect example. Um, of what we do and why we do it, and we can't do it alone. Our tagline is Mount Washington School, forever inspired together. You certainly have inspired us forever to keep doing what we're doing for the children of Mount Washington. We can't do it alone, and we have you there as a partner. And again, I cannot express the thanks enough on behalf of all of our children, our school, and community members. Thank you. And together, we will use this in a very productive manner with all of them. So thank you very much.
we shall reap our harvest. While we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, but especially those of the household of faith. As L.P. said in one of his sermons, we have a responsibility to share our blessings with others. And the endowment is a way of sharing not only a portion now, but passing on to future generations the blessings that we have received. Today, we at Mount Washington are benefiting from members who previously contributed to the endowment fund. Through past donations, wise investment of funds, it has grown to $750,000. 4% of those funds, or over $25,000, are used annually to support the current operating budget. Very important. The more the fund grows to help secure the future, the more it is also able to help support current programs of the church that we enjoy. And it's really the gift that keeps on giving. Giving to the endowment helps ensure that this wonderful church that we love and LP has led for the last several years will continue to thrive in the future. Let's not relax our efforts. Let's do good by sharing the blessings, and in due time, let's reap the harvest. Thank you very much again. I'm told that people in the back didn't get to see the amounts on the check. Uh, the person who wrote the checks needs to make the numbers a little bigger, I guess. So if you are the holder of a big check as you walk out to the reception following, we can carry that with you so we can all make sure that we see the dollars and how they were apportioned to the various funds. We, were, we have been blessed over the last seven or eight years to not only get to know and love LP as we have done, but to um, extend that love and affection to Nancy and to his extended family, which has grown um, through marriages and the births of several grandchildren. And we do love kids around here, um, and we love babies, and we love grandchildren, and we know that he didn't know what they were until he came here, and neither did some of the rest of us. Um, so the group of us women who put this little day together decided it might be fun to offer to Elvie's family something for those grandchildren from us as a congregation. So we have here, um, and we'll leave those here for him to take, nine copies, one each, marked with the name of each of his grandchildren from the church. And we have this book, it's called The Grandpa Book, and we'll hold this up for the people in the back too who don't get to see the big numbers. The Grandpa Book will go in our church library. There's a place on the inside um, cover for a book plate that says, in commemoration of LP's great ministry with us, we offer this book to the library. Um, we reached out to our resident children's literacy expert, Marian Davis, who helped us choose this book. On the inside of the back cover, can you see it? There's a spot for a picture of grandpa and grandchild. So it's our hope that each family that um, LP has raised and is beginning to see the grandchildren born will have that opportunity to put a picture of LP and each of their grandchildren in the book. So that will go in the library, and these nine will go to LP, who needs no introduction. Here he is, LP Jones. message this morning 
is the sermon was the sermon text when I was ordained, uh, and both sermons will remain with me forever, and those preachers as well. There's no adequate way to say to say thank you. And perhaps what came to mind was just to say a little bit about my understanding of what ministry is and why it's been so special with you and with the other congregations served. It is a privilege to be invited to stand and proclaim the word. It's a privilege to be invited into hospital rooms and crisis situations. It's a privilege to be there when people are baptized and when they exchange wedding vows. It's a privilege to be invited into the warp and woof of living. And there is no person who has not for ordination who was ever worthy of that privilege, especially this one. But the gratitude that comes by trying to be faithful, fill your heart, your spirit, and to make even the most difficult challenges really seem light in comparison. So thank you for all the tender moments that we shared in hospital rooms and hospice facilities, operating theaters, living rooms and dens when we shared those tender moments. I was never adequate for the task, but I was so privileged to be with you as we stood on that holy ground and set on that holy ground, recognizing that even in its end, and even when it's most difficult, life is ever so precious. And yes, I can say with all honesty, I thank you for the time in committee meetings. <laughs> Endless committee meetings. <laughs> because there, we found a way to try to embody our belief in God, our understanding of what gospel is, without those many meetings that went on far too long, we could not be the people we are. And so we continue to do this. So I thank you for the faithfulness that each member of those committees brought to that time. And I am so damn glad I don't have as many. <laughs> Believe me. And I want to thank every person who served on session. Some said yes too quickly, thought they knew what they were getting into, and found out they didn't. Others said yes oh so reluctantly, and proved to be some of the most faithful and creative members of session we've had. But everyone sharing gifts that makes this congregation who it is. And I receive far too much credit for the wonders that session has led us through in some, some understandably difficult years. And that's part of what gives me confidence in the difficult years ahead. And I give thanks for all the worship services. Twice a week, for a while, three times a week, we gathered. Christmas Eve seemed like all day. <laughs> but always wonderful, always filled with the Spirit. And I can't say that I remember every service, but I can say that every service has shaped me. And if it shaped you, then don't give thanks to me. Give thanks to God for the wonderful movement of the Spirit when this people gathers. And at the top of the list, thank you for all the table fellowship. In the fellowship hall, yes. Local restaurants, yes. In homes, yes. And please continue to take advantage of those opportunities because... Where we meet and feed each other, we are fed by the Spirit and empowered to do more of the feeding ministries to which we're called. Yes, feeding ministries through the little building next door, but also feeding ministries through the very the gifts of personality and the gifts of hope that we have. As the church declines, who's going to pick up the burden and the privilege of telling the world that hope is worth the effort? That it's that thing that Emily Dickens said that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. It's congregations that are gathering that help the world to believe that hope is not just a fantasy, but it is something that tr transforms our very lives and makes our lives worth living. 
I came here assuming this would be my last installed position. And I was stunned by the all too quick termination of that call. That even before leaving the hospital, I knew that my resources were no longer adequate to serve such a wonderful congregation and be at all deserving of your trust and confidence. So, although the decision came easily, please know that it was the most challenging and difficult decision in my life to say, no, I can't do it anymore. Out of love for this congregation, I've got to get out of the way. So it was a challenging time, but the comfort is in seeing how you are rising to the occasion, the continuation of Thrive, the continuation of ministries. And I know it's difficult to come when you don't know the person as, as well as you knew me, but then another person will come and you'll know that individual, and the Spirit of God and the presence of God is still here. And so I thank you for not giving and I continue to pray that you will listen for the guidance of the Spirit and follow as you are led. And yes, Walter is ever so right. It is clay vessels, fragile as can be, but the message and the ministry are ever so precious. And we are transformed as we allow that ministry to work in and through us. So thank you for these gifts today. Thank you for your support, your challenges, your encouragement, your criticism, your love throughout the years of ministry together. And please know that I don't know how much longer I have. Uh, this little thing promises to make it a little longer than they originally said. My first doctor said I'd be dead, but now he was wrong and I fired him. <laughs> your support, your encouragement is the strength that I've used to get this far. And I continue to depend upon it as I continue to love you. Thank you ever so much.